Hello there, Chris here from Becker's Models and it's time for a little update. I did one at the start of the year. It's winter down here, as you can tell, I'm all rugged up. No, I can just wearing a t-shirt. Winter here in Queensland, it means complete sunshine outside, no rain, 20 degrees, 22 degrees Celsius, middle of the day. Beautiful. I just came back from a nice drive along the range. It looks fantastic. So yes, our winters here are very nice indeed. Thank you. Now look, for those of you who've just uh, joined the channel, I had a really viral sort of experience with that top 10 list I did uh, a few weeks ago, 100,000 plus views, I don't know why that happened, but anyway, a lot of you subscribed and hello, welcome, and really this video is mainly for you guys, but also for those of you who've, who've uh, come along along the way and you're asking like, what are you up to, Becca, what are you doing, what's going on? So I, I just got to give a little explanation of how I model and I will get into what's going on because as you can see this is my while this looks like my modeling room this is actually my office so I'm filming this from home uh, I work from home I'm self-employed plus I run help run a publishing business and because of that my hours are very long my, my day is 16 hours plus sometimes but I have large gaps in between now when I first started up working from home it was a real struggle and my wife suggested to me she said oh you got to do something you're, you're just sitting in front of the computer you know watching cat videos or just stressing out or going over things too many times Get a bloody hobby, Chris, she said to me. So fair enough, it's gone from building a little tiny airfix kit, I might even put a photo up there of my first ever kit, to uh, this obsession. So <laughs> I model while I work, and it's, it's a privilege to do that, but it's, it helps with the stress, helps with my, with my, um, with my health. And um, what that means is I rarely model at night, I sometimes get to model at night after the kids are in bed, and almost never model on the weekend. Uh, I, that's, you know, family time and what have you. So if you're looking for updates on Facebook and you're like, oh, what are you up to, Becky? You're not doing anything. Well, I don't model on the weekend like most people do. So um, there it is. So enough of that waffling. Let's get straight into it. Uh, what have I been working on right now? So there's three things I'm working on at the moment. I've got one very long term, I mean really long term <laughs> project. Uh, I did one video for it. I'll tell you about that in a minute plus a, a major distraction, inspirational project, and a Shelf of Doom project. Now I've done, I've completed one Shelf of Doom so far this year, that was, no two I should say. I've I finished my 8080, which is in the, in the cabinet there behind me, the, the walker on the lava field. Put a couple of videos up for that recently. And I did the AMK 148 MiG-31. But the other one I'm doing, which is in the cabinet down there, right down the bottom, is Academy's AH1Z, yes Z, Viper. I'll put some photos up of my work in progress. I finally got the thing together. Uh, it just needs a few seams to be filled and, and cleaned up, some photo etch added, and I can start painting. And I'm gonna paint that as a Australian Army what if. Uh, the Aussie, Aussie Army are getting rid of their Tigers and they wanted a new attack helicopter. They eventually picked the Apache. And unfortunately, as I said in my last video, there's no decent Apache kit out there really. Well, there's a few Academy ones in Italy. <laughs> so I did the I'm doing the um, the Viper as an Australian Army version. So uh, look out for that one. And the other major project I'm doing is the Academy CH53E. Let me just get the box. Here she is, the Super SH1T TER. If you can, um, <laughs> so YouTube won't demonetize me for swearing, but it's called the Super Sea Stallion. It's a massive helicopter, even a 148 scale. This is a, a major project. Uh, I'll put some photos up. I'd, like I said, I did a, a video six months ago starting it off. I have started on it. I got stalled straight away because I made the stupid mistake of trying to motorize it, believe it or not. So I, <laughs> that really uh, put, put things behind. Uh, I've almost completed the tail. I'm now adding rivets to it. I'll put a couple of photos up here of, of what I've done. And yeah, I'm hoping to get the next video for that out soon because that is, one of the problems with videoing builds is it ends up taking you twice as long, okay? Because um, every hour you spend videoing is two to three hours of editing. But it's not just that, it's some, the, the Super Stallion, it's very intricate, it's a very hard, um, like I said, I'm completely redoing the entire kit. Check out that long-winded video I did about my plans for it. It's gonna take me probably a year, two years to make. I'm hoping to have it done by the uh, state competition that we have here for next year, not even this year, I'm not even thinking about this year. So, uh, so yeah, I'm hoping to get the next video out soon, but bear with me. The other thing, little thing, the little distraction, let's go over the bench and I'll show you that right now. So this is my tank girl. This is the uh, spare TACOM Object 279 turret, which I've modified slightly. We've got a bit of a day spa bed here that I'm gonna make and put an umbrella up here and a 
few other parts, a bit of a rocket there on the on the barrel. And yeah, I'm gonna have this lovely lady here standing on the back here as she was sunbathing. I'm gonna make a deck chair there. Bit of fun, why not? I'm gonna add a bit more weld seam detail and a few other things. And uh, yeah, paint it up into a, a funky color. The great thing about this is I can put this turret on the actual tank. I can swap them back and forth. So that leads me to, hmm, might make some very interesting things happening with that, uh, with that tank. So yeah, stay tuned for that one. So stuff that I'm working on on and off the bench, you know, I do a little bit, put it away, do a little bit, put it away. Uh, you would have seen I built the Taclon Object 279 and I did a build review for that and I've got I've gone ahead of that. I'm not going to show you what I've done just yet. It's a bit different. I'm not doing it out of the box. I'm making quite a few changes to the to the baseline kit. So that's on and off the bench at the moment. Might take it with me on holidays, might not. We'll see how I go. The other thing I'm doing, let me get the box. The second thing I'm doing on and off the bench, and I actually just finished major uh, pre-painted construction of this last night. Such a beautiful kit. Let's see if you can get, get it in there nice and sharp. It's uh, Tamiya's new Spitfire, Tamiya. Mm -hmm. Tamiya's new Spitfire. Doing this for the Plastic Posse uh, group build, and what a fantastic kit. I'm glad I held on to this kit. I was thinking about getting rid of it and just doing 132. No, 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 this is a beautiful kit. So um, yeah, that's underway and I've got something very different planned for that one. Well, not that different. It's an inspired build by another uh, modeler who I, I admire so much, Fancharello. So uh, stay tuned for that one. And the last thing that I'm working on and off, and in fact it was really weird, the other day we lost power here, so <laughs> uh, I had my laptop upstairs on the deck overlooking, I had a forest out the back, I had some beautiful light there and I thought, oh, a bit of downtime, I, I can't use the lights downstairs, it's a bloody dungeon down here. I've got all my lights on at the moment here, so you're probably getting washed out with lights, but the, uh, the F14, the 132 F14, I've scribed the entire bottom fuselage on it, and now I need to move to the top half, and I come up with a different technique to scribe the panel lines and remove the old ones. It's actually really quick, and I think it's a good job, so stay tuned for that one. It's really good. I'm, I'm, I'm also building the little, the little, <laughs> I'm building the, the 148 scale Tamiya um, A and D at the same time, and I mean, they're already pre-assembled, ready to go. I'm just I'm going to play catch up with this one. So I've got a lot of things on the go, but I also have a lot of projects that I've stalled out on and I really want to get back to. I made a promise at the start of the year, oh, I plan to do these kits up here, blah, 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 and that's all just gone to, you know, what's the, what's the saying, best laid plans of mice and men. Too many distractions, too many squirrels as we call it, but I'll just go over what I've got stalled out and I really want to get back to. And uh, yeah, they really excite me. I mean, the first one is the, the A6 Intruder, the 132 Trumpeter kit. Uh, this is an amazing kit. It's if you watch Doug's uh, channel, um, Matt at Doug's Models, he's done it. He's done the E version. I'm doing the A. And the the main thing with this kit is the ordnance on it is absolutely rubbish. You, I mean, you just toss it away first thing you do. Uh, it's completely inaccurate. So I had to get some proper. I wanted to do a full uh, dumb bomb load. Lo start that again. A dumb bomb loadout, which is like 22 Mark 82 500 pound bombs. So I bought some resin ones, and they had to come from France, in the middle of the virus, blah, 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 blah. They've, they've been here for a while, they're sitting in the box. I really need to get back to it, but so many things get in the way. Speaking about things getting in the way, I'll just turn around here. We've got the Hong Kong Models B17. I have started this. Uh, I've built the in full interior. I've been following uh, Cameron over at Wasatch Model. He did one, and then uh, who else? Oh, Tom... Um, Tom at Man vs Kid, he's completed his, he did a fantastic job as well. And yeah, it's it's a soul sucking kit, <laughs> to be honest. It's not Tamiya quality, it's good enough, it's typical Hong Kong models. Uh, I just stalled out because I'm just like, ugh, you know, I need, I need to get the momentum going on that thing again. And the way you do that is you don't accurize the interior, just slap the bloody thing together. Uh, and the other thing, I, as a bit of therapy, retail therapy, you can see, I hope you can see the box. Tamiya's ancient Lancaster, I started building this as well, and again, I've built the interior, but the difference with that is, is I bought the, uh, was it the Dam Buster? No, the Grand Slam kit, which is motorized, and I've cannibalized that, and I've taken all the motorized props and, and motors, and I've put it in this, so this is going to be in flight and flying with spinning motors, and if somebody wants a really cheap <laughs> Grand Slam Tamiya Lancaster, hit me up, uh, I can give you one. Uh, the other two things that are that are stalled, I hope you can see them out there in the corner there. Ships, I'm not a ship modeler. I try, I've made two or three so far. I'm, I've got some major ships I really wanna do. So I'm slowly getting there, but I think I found with ship models, it doesn't suit my style, which is stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. 
I think you need to sit down and just concentrate on that ship and do nothing else. Look at Harry, Harry Houdini. He's got um, that beautiful uh, ancient airfix kit that he's done, and he, I think he got that about a month ago. He hasn't stopped. He's just gone hell for leather, no distractions. That's how you do a ship model. He's got that right. So I've got the uh, the Enterprise, the 1700 scale Academy Enterprise that I reviewed last year, uh, which I've opened up the hangar, I've detailed the hangar, I've bought some new aircraft for it, and I'm slowly bringing that up to up to speed before we get some paint on it. And then I've got the Hobby Boss pre deadnought French Danton, which is a beautiful little ship, and I'm really looking forward to finishing that, but oh my god is it detailed. But it's a very cheap kit, I don't understand that, that. It's, it's cheaper than a 132 scale aircraft, but it's you know a couple hundred hours of building time into it. It's such a ship modeling is actually quite cheap when you do the do the math. Okay, so they're my stalled ones. Let's go have a look and see what else I'm doing. Now you're probably thinking, and if you got this far, well done. <laughs> you know you've got so many things on the go. I think I've counted is that 10 or 11 things. I don't know. I've got quite a few things on the go, wanting to do, blah blah blah. Surely that's enough, Chris. Well, surely you can't be serious. Don't call me Shirley. Um, well, hello Penny. Penny's just down there if you can hear her. She's just on the floor in front of me here. Uh, I have uh, quite a few things planned as well. Things I really want to get into when I've got the time and effort and other things get cleared away. And the first thing is a triplet of 172nd scale F-14s. We've got Academy's new tool. Badly, bad, bad, bad box art, but a beautiful kit, 172 uh, F-14s. We've got the Fine Moulds, okay, which came as a magazine subscription. I was able to get that. You come, there's about four of these boxes, and the last one, oh, yeah, the 172, they're big boxes, hang on, and that's, uh, what's that, Great War Hobbies, you know, my favourite squadron, VF-31, that's their 172 F-14D, so I'm hoping to do a triple build on those, because um, they're all superlative kits, and they're all very interesting in their own right, so maybe I'll video that, maybe I won't, let's see what happens, and another triple build, believe it or not. Some Falcons, yes, I love the Falcons. I've built, I don't know how many I've built now, three or four. But recently, um, Chris Zyber, I hope I'm pronouncing your last name there correct, Chris, at Luftraum 72, he did a magnificent 1350 scale, which is, you know, the one that's this big, not, not this big. Hang on. You know, the dinner plate version. Upside down, Miss Jane. Turn it around. Okay. He recently did a... Uh, painted up one of these in 1350 scale and he did a magnificent job, better than I've done with my build so far, so I really want to emulate what he's done, um, particularly the way he's using a warm colour palette. So uh, I've got two other Falcons, I've got another one of these which I'm not doing as a Falcon, I'm doing as a, as a modification. It's a really old project that I'm resurrecting at a smaller scale. And the Solo Falcon, if you've watched uh, the Solo movie, which I really enjoyed, a lot of people didn't, don't know why, it was, it was fun. Um, so I'm, I'm doing three, dun dun dun. So this one's already built because, I mean, if you know, I mean, these kits are amazing. I had this laid out upstairs on the uh, the dinner table upstairs, a spare table, and I had the parts all laid out, had my tools left out, and I could hear someone working on it. And I looked around and my seven-year-old son, little bugger, he actually had built the guns, the, the, uh, the loading ramp, okay, he built some of the... Um, uh, what else did you do, Mark? You did, he did the cockpit. I mean, he, I had all these parts all laid out ready to, to, I was going to do them after dinner, you know. He just did them for me. So, you know, if a seven-year-old can do it, any of us can do it. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned for that one. Uh, I don't know when I'll get to this, but um, I really, really want to paint and get, and get involved in this. So maybe it won't be a triple build. Maybe it'll be this one, and then I'll do a double build with the other two. If you watch my video on wishlist kits, well, you know, top 10 groups of kits that we want, that we wish for, and um, I touched on about Tacom and their 116 tankette range, and I finally got a weasel, or Weasel, how do you pronounce it, I don't know. <laughs> and I was all set to build this, all ready to go, and then um, I was like, yeah, oh, gee, that's a thick box, I mean, how am I going to fit that in my suitcase? I'm going on holiday soon, so, you know, I was going to take this with me. We're going on the airplane, we're not, oh, hang on, light's going crazy, can you see that? Okay. Going on the airplane, not the uh, not the usual car trip we do, and uh, I was like, oh, it's a bit too big to fit in the in the suitcase with all my tools and stuff. And then the group build I was going to do it with, they pulled me up and said, whoa, 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 Chris, you're reading the month and date in the American style, which is stupid. <laughs> it's day, month, year, people, not month, day, year. It doesn't start till July. I thought I could start it straight away. Like, oh. So anyway, later on in the year, I'll get to this one. Great kit. I've already had a good look at it. If you want me to do a review, leave a comment down below, but. I think I'll just get stuck in the building and I'll do a little review at the start of the build because I've built two of their other uh, 116s, the Type 94 and the K-1 
can't remember what the other one was. No, I just built the Tottenham 4 and um, they're fantastic kits. They're, they're late model tack on, go together really, really well. Now, what have I been buying and collecting and you know, adding to the stash? Well, I've only finished two models and bought, you know, I don't know how many, <clears throat> over 30. And <laughs> we all do it. We all like to collect stuff. My cupboard, which is just over here, out of shot. It's completely full, and in fact, it's so full, I've got stuff up here. What, what's this up here? <gasps> Another X-Wing. Remember when I was doing my top 10 kits, and I said this was one of my favorites? And just as I was editing it, someone put one up on eBay. It had already been built, but not painted. And as if you don't know with Bandai stuff, if it hasn't been glued together, you can take it completely apart. Got that super, super, super cheap. Very, very excited about that one. Um, so I'll, I've got my other one. Can you see that? Is that in shop? Maybe. Yep, the other one's in there as well. Hmm, trench run diorama or anyone? Anyway, that's long in the future. I'm glad I was able to pick one of those up. But let's talk about some other stuff. So we've got a tiger. Tiger, tiger, tiger. Ooh, tiger. Ooh, full interior tiger. Hmm, blow up this tiger. Yes, tiger, tiger. Ryfield model tiger. I've always wanted to have a go at their, um, their full interior one, but I still really want to do the Vitman one. I really want to blow that son of a nutsy up. Um, yeah, because I really hate Whitman Tiger tanks. So um, there is a sale on at the moment for one of these, one of these uh, Ryfield model ones. I'm tempted to get it. It doesn't have an interior. The late model uh, Vitman um, that Ryfield doesn't know why they didn't put an interior in it. So I might get that and just retrofit these parts into it. Hopefully, there's not much difference between an early and a late. Well, enough difference. It doesn't matter when there's blown up bits in the middle. Yeah. So um, Tiger Tiger. Speaking about Ryfield models, wait a second. Now I love Tamiya kits, their armour is not the same standard as aircraft, does that make sense? I don't know, they, they sort of simplify the detail a little bit to make the build a bit more pleasurable. There's, the part count in is, isn't as high as say rifle models or Meng or Taclon or Dragon. But um, I, I think I've bought and sold their Easy 8 kit, Tamiya's Easy 8 kit, three times. And I'm going to sell it again because I picked up, I was able to get from... Uh, Good mate of mine here locally, the Ryfield, is it Ryfield? Yeah, Ryfield Easy 8. I've had a good look at this kit. It looks fantastic. Can't wait to build this one. Um, I've got a few extras I've collected for the Tamiya kit, so I'll put it on this one instead. So yeah, looking forward to doing just, you know, out of the box build, something just, you know, everybody wants to do a Sherman tank. You either do your Fury or what have you. I'll probably do one with the, uh, the black markings on it, 12th Armour Division probably. So yeah, really looking forward to this. Now, after I did that video about Tamiya 140 at scale aircraft, should be the first aircraft, you know, the late 90s stuff that they did. Uh, should be the first aircraft you should do if you're returning to the hobby or you're starting. I looked at my stash and I went, I don't have enough of them, so I went out and bought some more. Now, I've never really liked the Bowfighter, but um, yeah, it's sort of grown on me, and it's one of those planes like the P 47. I think it looks better wheels down. So, uh, yeah, I was able to pick this one up, plus a few more. Got a few more Corsairs, P 47s, of course. Because there's nothing better to cleanse your planet, planet, <laughs> cleanse your palate like <laughs> a, um, a Tamiya 140 at scale aircraft. So go ahead and get them if you ever see them on special and they, you can get these for an amazing price if you, if you just hunt around. What else have I got? There's a few more things and we'll wrap it up. Some weird and wonderfuls. Love Porco Rosso. This is one of the planes at the end, the, uh, what's it called? The Savoia Marchetti S55. Okay. Looks like a very complicated build, 172nd scale, it's a bit small, but uh, it's such a, such a weird looking aircraft, couldn't, couldn't um, hold off on that. Speaking about weird aircraft, you can see I'm rushing through this, we've got a lot of stuff to go through. Um, yeah, another Models Vit, one of these you know, very unique uh, manufacturers from Eastern Europe, that's the XP55 Ascender, which kind of looks like a little X-Wing. Very strange aircraft from the end of, or in the middle of World War II, went nowhere. And then the other one is upside down, Miss Jane is the Dora Wings, who do some great racing aircraft, and I was able to get this kit for oh, well under half price at a big sale here recently, the Bell P63 with a massively chopped wings. You can see those wings have been chopped off, as they do for the Reno races, so I'm really looking forward to that one. Three to go, and we'll wrap it up. I reviewed the uh, Trumpeter, or Hobby Boss, same thing, <laughs> 1 32nd scale Sturmovic, and uh, led me to think, yeah, I really need to do some other sort of non uh, single engine fighter sort of jobbies and I recently read a, a really good book on the Battle of Britain, The a Most Dangerous Enemy, and one of the units that the Luftwaffe used, I think it's uh, Eisengroup and 10, or 210 or something like that, the, the markings are in here, I'll, I'll get it wrong, I'll explain in the description below. They were the best users of the BF-110, the other BF-110 units were 
utilized horribly. Anyway, I won't go into it. It's a fascinating um, subject. And yeah, I picked up this ancient, and it is, it's a very old Revell kit that's been reboxed. And you know, who says ancient kits and older kits aren't, aren't worthy? This, this is really good. It's got modern decals, so you know, it should go together. <laughs> we'll see how well it goes together, but this looks like a fun kit. So I bought that, and then I bought a few more, because uh, to go with a Sturmovic, you gotta have a Stuka. Okay, so there's the trumpet of Stuka. Yeah, it's a little inaccurate, but yeah, it goes together pretty well, apparently. And um, yeah, so I've got the early model there. So again, another Battle of Britain style style jobby. And speaking of early machines, you can't go past this box art. Isn't that amazing? Okay, I think that's the Coral Sea Battle, not Midway. So that's the early version of the uh, SBD, the slow but deadly Dauntless. And if you watch the um, Roland Emmerich movie, the Midway movie, great movie. I mean, I was I was really impressed. I thought the trailer was rubbish, but then I watched the movie and I've watched it about three times now. I loved it. So yeah, I can't wait to do that, and I can't wait to display that in flight, in, in a dive like that, because that's just, that's just brilliant, isn't it? So, um, yeah, looking forward to that one. Still here. <laughs> Thanks for coming to the end. Um, yeah, I love this shirt. <laughs> so, that's my crazy plans, not plans, what's going on, what I'm doing, what I'm not doing. Uh, if you'd like to leave a comment below to, to ask, hey Chris, can you film this build or can you just give me a look at this kit, I just want a quick review or whatever, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, I'd like to end with just a few notes though, there's a few channels I'd like all you guys to check out, guys and gals, excuse me, and non-binary, um, and that's uh, Grungelina uh, Craft Workshop, where that was the inspiration for my Tank Girl uh, build that I'm doing at the moment, so you've got to check him out, he's got... A small number of subs, which is outrageous. His work is fantastic. And also Sarah at uh, Staples and Vines. I hope I've got that right. An absolutely amazing 3D printer, a master scratch builder. I've only just discovered him. Uh, he's they just put a, um, a link, uh, no, a link, a comment on one of my videos, the wishlist video, and I'll, I'm just blown away by that channel. Sub straight away. So go over there, check it out. It's amazing. Some really big builds for those of us who you know, you can't get your, your wish list satisfied by the big companies. 3D printing is making a, uh, it's headway into our hobby and it's something I'm going to have to pull the trigger on because, you know, to do some of the subjects I want to do, maybe I just need to bite the bullet instead of waiting for it, just go and grab that 3D printer. So anyway, thanks very much for, uh, for staying around and um, catch you around next time. I'm going on holidays, so it'll be a bit of a gap between the next video. I might put one out next week, see how I go with Tank Girl, see if I can get her finished. If not, I'll have to wait until after the winter break. I'm going to the tropics. Yes, I'm going to be wearing shirt sleeves or nothing at all uh -huh. <laughs> for a couple of weeks. Go by, by the side of a pool. Go enjoy the sunshine. So, um, yeah, until next time, happy modeling. And, yeah, they really do, well, quality control. Work on it, Airfix. Work on it. <laughs>